on uh, stellar radiation, well, radiation to stellar surfaces. And I think that I gave a reasonably thorough explanation of it during my midsummer presentation. But as, just as a reminder, how it works is that we're trying to analyze how radiation propagates through stellar surfaces, which are modeled just as parallel layers, one on top of the other, uh, depending on uh, various factors of the radiation, such as the frequency, and various factors of the stars themselves, such as density, temperature, well, density distribution, temperature distribution, uh, so on and so forth. And what I want to talk about today is just a little piece of code that I wrote. It's not very long, and it's not that complicated, but I was pretty proud of it. And I, I thought it was nice, so I just wanted to share it with you. So what do we have? Can I erase this? Um, there's probably no erasers, huh? <laughs> Behind the scene, or screen. Behind oh, yeah, the scene. <laughs> so what we have is a matrix with elements, all of them between zero and one. And we want to make a grayscale plot of it. So uh, I think this is the one. So yeah, we just have a matrix. So uh, this is the grayscale plot of the matrix. What that means is we map each uh, element, which like I said is between zero and one to a color. I believe that zero is completely black and one is completely white. And so what the uh, values represent in this matrix is each uh, column is a specific frequency of the light and each row represents uh, each parallel layer of the star and the elements in uh, these rows and columns represent how much uh, radiation is propagating through this matrix. So for one uh, column, uh, we start off with this much radiation, then it passes through one layer, now there's this much, this element, and so on and so forth until we get to the top. So uh, essentially this is how the radiation would look uh, permeating through a star for the range of frequencies that we observed. Now, uh, the problem with this is it's not a very good rectangle, I mean, uh, plot. Uh, so, uh, it's too blocky and we want a better continuum. Uh, we want it to be much smoother rather than, we want smooth trans transitions in between the colors. So, uh, how I did it, which is uh, my favorite code that I ever wrote, even though it's kind of simple. So, let me open it after that. Uh, here is just the matrix that we were using. Uh, here's the final result, and here's the code that I wrote. So, uh, we have a matrix, and I define a new matrix, which is almost twice as large as the other one, and then I just input in all of the values uh, of the original one in a specific pattern. So if I have, for example, at whatever elements like so, then I input them here. I put zeros. Everywhere, everywhere else. So there's a row of zeros in between each uh, original row and a column of zeros in between each original column. Uh, that's this part of the code. Here and here, uh, I then take the average of each two elements and replace the zero with that. So now I've got uh, one half this plus this. And then I uh, just work it through like so. So now I just have a much larger, about twice as large matrix, which, is, which has the original uh, values as well as the averages. And then this uh, first for loop, the K for, the K for loop, uh, I ran it four times. To, so then I just repeated this exact process to completely smooth it out. And this is what it ended up looking like. And it's a, you can see that it's a completely smooth curve uh, to the human eye. Uh, and I just really like the way that it did that, even though it's kind of simple. And 
So that's one of the things that I did. Uh, if you'll, now moving on from that, uh, you may recall during my Midsummer presentation that I was talking about uh, that we had a Fortran code and I wanted to transcribe it into MATLAB, uh, run it on Astro 1, and I said uh, last time that Astro 1 was a supercomputer, I was mistaken, sorry, that was uh, incorrect. Uh, so I wanted to transcribe it into MATLAB and hopefully it would run faster. Uh, Lawrence is graphic and Michelle Didi. Uh, wanted to use a specific package for Fortran and we would do speed tests to see uh, which one of us would win. But uh, uh, we still haven't actually run those speed tests, unfortunately. Uh, we will be doing that uh, soon enough, I think. But uh, there, well, I first have to run through some uh, problems with the MATLAB code. But uh, moving forward, uh, we have to figure out one specific part of uh, what's going on in Scala Pack, which will be uh, my work for this last week, uh, I think, which, so, yeah, the specific package I should have mentioned is called Scala Pack. So, what we have, what we want to solve is a matrix equation A, X equals B, where all of, where A, X, and B are n by n matrices, and so this Scala pack is going to be used on us on a on a parallel processing machine. Uh, so each uh, processor will solve one right hand side for B, uh, and the issue comes when we have to uh, reassemble the uh, X matrix. Each processor has one part of the solution, but and looking into the code, it doesn't seem like it's uh, reassembling X properly. It uses a very strange for loop and branching statement. It, it, it seems overcomplicated. It goes through each processor, checks uh, if this is the correct part. If not, it moves on, and which is strange because we would assume that the uh, machines themselves would know where to find each specific part of the solution and how to reassemble it. So I don't necessarily know if this is the proper way to do it or if it's just or if, if we should write our own code that would be more efficient and use that and see what happens. So that's my work for the uh, last couple of days and that's it. <laughs> So the box that you showed, what are the coordinates on that box? Well, what do you mean? Are they like depth into the star versus what, no, what do the dimensions actually, or uh, will they map onto in, in a physical sense? Uh, I can't be certain, but I think it goes from the center of the star to the surface for the for each uh, row, and each column which represents frequencies, uh, I'm not that's actually... That's wavelength, that's wavelength. Okay. Yeah, I'm not quite certain what the range is, unfortunately. Uh, do it's you... just over one transition. Okay, so, so an angstrom or something like that. Well, it's Doppler units, actually. Yeah. So. Angstroms are irrelevant here. Uh, don't want to beat the flame. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Oh, so do you uh, do you believe MATLAB would uh, be able to beat a parallel processor kind of system? Um, I mean, of course, it depends on what you're running MATLAB on, right? Well, no, MATLAB would be run on a parallel processor oh, okay. as well. Okay. There's no way MATLAB would be able to do that. Okay, I was just I, I'm not that sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Do you have something to dig on? You can ask. I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks all. again, Daniel. <laughs>